the ball jack I got called jack shit. This how I did it all for a ticket. I felt the bombs when he spending it by the trinity. Chat the dog doing business in the big fucking up shit. She doing the bit. I be getting to the chicken. Just blaze on that Facebook live, man. Drop my phone so I can fuck you up. He has a, an extremely powerful organization right now. Panda. The word is everywhere. I've been sharing that shit. What's up? I, rock my, I don't got my hat on like I said earlier, but I rock, you know I rock my hat I all you, the time. I see you. That's what's up. That's why you I stay around. Rapping, you yes, know? sure. It's a, it's a great movement. Um, and, you know, I want you to talk about it. All right. Well, you know, like she said, I'm Jay. He is young, black, and famous. Guns down like a zip. Guns down like fuck. You know, we in the building. You know, guns down like fuck is New York Public Hospital response to gun violence. And basically, what we about is giving back to the community, making a positive way for the youth and the parents of kids and the family that's affected by gun violence. We have all type of resources. You know, we deal with the schools. We deal with the deal with the detention centers, the probation officers, the church, we all out in the street doing it up, you know? So if y'all have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. If you have any information you want to know as far as guns down life up, hit me up. I'm right here, I'm in the building, we live, Jess Blaze, no DJ Twist, holla at your station. When did you start this organization? Back in 2010, um, DJ Molly Moore and Joe Schick, which is the executive director of New York Health and Hospital, came up with the concept, Guns Down Right Fuck, because we got tired of, you know, kids getting shot up in the streets and mm -hmm. coming in the hospitals and, you know. For no reason, right? Right, for no reason, you know, with the violence on the streets. So we have to come up with some type of concept to give them some type of resource and outlook. So when they do That's get out of the hospital. That's not how you spell my fucking name. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. You know, so we have to give them some type of resources for when they get out the hospital so they don't become repeat offenders. Definitely. Because we get people that get shot, get out, end up getting shot again, again and coming right, right back they in doing gun lesson. violence and the gangs in the street like that. So we came up with the concept guns down like fuck. You know, so we do have multiple components and whatnot. And, you know, we figured it was time to make change. How do you feel about how all these guns got on the street? Because, I mean, I'm not... Back in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, granted, there was violence, you know, but people scrapped. Right. They fought. Yeah, they, was, they, brought, they threw their fists up before they even thought about pulling out a gun. So where do you think, or like, at what point do you think, like, all these guns came? And then, you know, they're trying to pull this whole gun control shit. That didn't work. It seems like when they pulled that gun control law, yeah. it's like more guns fill the streets. It's, it's, it's a money maker, you know what I mean? And, you know, as we got older and when people were getting beat up, getting jumped, you know what I mean, getting bullied, they didn't know how to fight. A lot of people didn't know how to fight back. You have the people that knew how to fight, then you had those that didn't know how to fight. And when they was getting beat up, they was getting picked on, called names, mm -hmm. and all kind of names. So they had to come to way to defend themselves. So the only thing they could come up with is pick up a knife, a bottle, a brick. You know, even you can remember back in the days when the parents used to tell your kids, listen, if you can't beat them, pick up I'm a brick, pick up a bottle, and bust them yeah. upside the head or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those were the days. So instead of them picking up bricks and bottles, that wasn't doing it. So the guns came into play. And I blame movie theaters. <laughs> Talking about gun violence. How you feel about gun violence? Gun violence, I think it should be, you know, if you're going to use a gun to protect yourself, yeah, you know, that's really it. Exactly, it's what I should be for no reason. And that's what everybody's doing. Yeah. So why do you need a gun to protect yourself, though? Why do you feel people need guns to protect themselves? We didn't need guns back in the days when we was protecting ourselves, we was using our fists. 
you see, I understand that, you know, like, all right, but me personally, I have a gun, you know, I keep a gun, you know, in case somebody mm-hmm. try to come in my house, yeah. you know, like, for that, let's say if I'm sleeping, and so I got a, I got a, I got a two-year-old daughter, too, I'm, you know, you never know what somebody got with them if they run into the house. But you're not out there running around with your gun, right? Help, huh? You're not out there running around with your gun for no reason. No. no. Okay, see, so that's different. You got these little fools that they want to, you know, like, once they get a, once they get a gun and they put that shit on their hip, it's like they feel invincible. They feel like hope. You know, they turn into a completely different person. They turn into a totally different person. And it could be like a, it could be a dude that's like pushing five two. <laughs> and you know, these little Napoleon. They turn into little Napoleons. You know, that's why we here guns down life up. That's why we here to get these guns out. We use hands to let them know there's many different ways you can squash beef. See, a lot of kids feel like. If they get into a situation and they get chunked or they get pumped or something that they feel the gun is the answer. But there's so many different ways we can defuse beef today without using gun violence. You know what I mean? And people are lazy and they rather resort to the easiest thing. And you know what? It's sad because it just remains a stigmatism. You know? And then it's sad because then you guys, you know, I'm, I'm Latina, but African Americans, they get labeled as, you know, a statistic. Well, we all get labeled Latinos. Yeah, definitely. Latinos, you know I mean? too. I'm not taking African away anything American, from us. We all get labeled. But, but what do we do as adults? What do we do? Where do we play a role at? Don't we yeah. play a role in these kids having guns in their hands as well? Do you think that's like a parenting? Yeah, I think I, I, I think it's lack of parenting. Yeah, a lot to do with TV and what they see on TV. Yeah, you know, yes. they see like them shot right people. Oh yeah, figure I got the forty on me, shoot him in his head, leave him dead for running around with a pack. Yeah. Like, you know, like they see that stuff and they try to read. And they want to emulate it. Things like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, and stuff like that. So true. See, I think movies like oh. Juice with Tupac was running around with the gun. Everybody think they Tupac back in the yeah, Juice days. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody, ain't nobody built for Juice. Hey, Half of these little fuckers don't even know what the hell Juice is. They gonna be like, what, apple or orange? <laughs> you know, for real, they don't know what move, what that movie is. You know, so it's crazy. About New Jack City with guns. That too, yeah. New Jack City. Yeah. Yeah, for real. <laughs> But lights out. I want to thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. No problem. You know you got to come over, right? You know I got to interview you. Oh, We're going to talk. We're going to talk on the sideline. So I'm going to test it out, see how far this thing goes. Yeah, you already know. I'm going to holler at you, all right? All right. Thanks for calling. You too. Yes, 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 Yeah, so it's, it's crazy. So I wanted to ask you how you felt about this whole George Zimmerman thing with him selling the gun. And him being able to sell the gun, and him calling the gun an American iconic piece. How dare you? <laughs> well, how dare I, you give a name? I personally feel that's total disrespect, and I feel like, you know, Trayvon Martin family was totally let down. Extremely um, let down. This man has run a monk since the situation has taken place. And you know, I actually know Trayvon Martin family. I have met them out in New Orleans. Okay. And um, I personally have dealt with them and I feel their pain. And you know, as long as society, and I'm not even gonna really say society, but as long as the government allows these people to do what they do and come in with these guns and, and protect them, then we're gonna always have George Zimmerman's. I mean, there was people like him way before he came about. So mm-hmm. he's not even the he's first. He's not the first. He's he just getting more highlights than everybody else, I think. Yeah, because he's he's getting a lot. A lot of people don't realize the backing and the support he's getting. It's ridiculous. From, you know, oh my his goodness, the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, or they're like all pro this killing for him. You know, but. They don't realize the effect because it hasn't happened to their family. But once it happened to their families, or then they want to start crying. Then they want to cry and say, "Oh, we got to get the guns and we got to stop this." Or the black people, the Latino, they doing this and they doing that. But their people, everything is all good. It's okay. It was a misunderstanding. Slap them on the wrist and let them go. But as long as they keep slapping on the wrist and letting them go, then they're gonna put them in position to do what they do. Right. As far as auctioning off a gun that took the life of a youth, a black youth at that. You know, I don't even know how they allowed him, to, and he did it with a private seller. Mm-hmm. I don't understand.
understand how they even allowed him to freaking do that. See, people, like, people, uh, people like him, you know, they, they, they look into changing the world. In a fucked up way. Wait, he did change the world. Yeah. He definitely changed he the world. Sure do you think lack of voting from people of color plays a part in this? Because I feel like if blacks, Latinos, I feel like if we really voted yes. the way we should have, yes. our vo voices would be heard. You know, a lot of people are ignorant and they're like, nah, my vote don't count, fuck that shit. Ain't nobody in here, my shit don't count. And it's like, that's a good it really, really does. It, it, Take the time to go to your local school and just vote. It takes 10 minutes. But people want to smoke, and I smoke weed, but people want to be smoking weed, turning up, partying, drinking, all this other extra bullshit. But they won't take ten minutes out of their time to voice their opinion. It's called not lack of knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, I believe, believe that that has to do with parenting as well. Yes, well, you got to look at the parents themselves. They are still they children. uneducated. <laughs> they are children. Yeah, themselves. they're children raging too. Grandmothers are how old right now? Like 35? 35, 36. Shit, I'm 33. I ain't trying to be a grandmother until like I'm 70. What? I'm going where you trying to I get to. I killed my son if he gives me a grandmother. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to go get the yacht like you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, it has a lot to do with that. And like I said, social media plays a very, very yeah. big role. And, you know, I think if... You know, we pay more attention to positive aspects in life opposed to females twerking or, you know, cats selling drugs and getting money, wearing all the jewelry and all the fancy cars and paying more attention to mm -hmm. black history, yeah. self-awareness. They don't read. self -knowledge. Nobody reads. Right. And I read every day. That's and... where we fall short. You know, but like I said, as far as guns down life up, our job is to get into these communities because we are deep in the communities. We engage with politicians, we engage with the churches, we engage with other organizations. Shout out to SOS Save Our Streets, you know, Africa Ford with Peace of the Lifestyle, Life Camp Incorporated, yes, yes, doing a lot of big things out here in Queens, mm -hmm. you know, she's yeah, doing definitely. powerful Do you have anything things. going on, like, coming up? Yes, so actually, we we're support? actually going to be in the Bronx tomorrow at Lincoln Hospital, SOS Save Our Streets of Guns Down Life Up is hosting an event tomorrow at 4 p.m. BX? 4 to 8 p.m. BX, Lincoln Hospital, 149th, 3rd Avenue. Word. You know, Between I want everybody to come out. Yeah, come That's through. Right off the concourse. It's going to be a nice day you know, tomorrow, It's going to be a nice day. A lot of people is going to be there. We're going to have a lot of artists. We're going to have and spoken words. Cause, yeah. You know what I mean? I Support want everybody to come out. You know, we're giving out shirts, hats, brochures. We're going to have open panels to discuss, you know, what we can do to help our youth and, like I said, the adults too, because it's it's about the adults as well. It's just not about the youth; it's about the adults too. Yeah. But somebody yeah, has to lead by example. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what we here to do: to lead by example to and try to make a change. Really and you know, I want everybody to go to gunsdownlifeup.org to learn more about the organization and what we have to offer to the community. You know what I mean? Or you can go to mindsetforlife.org. Shout out to my boy James mm -hmm. Dobbins, James Jimbo Dobbins, for doing a lot of work to bring a lot of awareness in the community as far as guns down life up and mindset for life. You know, yeah. he's the reason why I'm here today. That's what's up. You know, that's what's up. That's but, what you know, know, like I said, you know, I support it because yes, it's, it's sure. a great. You know, I, I think that's the first organization that I heard of pertaining to you know gun violence and stopping the violence and you know educating the youth. I have, right. I honestly have. I haven't heard anything else, so I really, really commend you on what you're doing. It's a very, very positive movement, um, and I wish you much, much success with that. Shout out you know? to Aisha Sheku up in Harlem, doing Peace Calf, you know what I mean? She's doing a lot of great things in the community as well. I mean, we have a lot of different organizations that we partner with and doing a lot of big things, so it's just not about guns down right up, it's about all the organizations that we work with in the community, mm -hmm. you know, and we could just get more people to understand what we're trying to do and to help engage and push the movement, I think we'll save a lot more lives. Absolutely. You know? It all starts with one. Yeah. You know, you lead the following. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know. But they just have to take heed and they just got to open up their mind. Like, look, shit can change. Yeah. It can be changed. It, it, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a year. But if, like they say, if you can affect one, one is good enough at times. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's awesome. But um, we also have A-Train. Shout out to my boy A-Train in the building. Come over here, A-Train. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, come on
little nervous. nervous here. I'm on a big yeah. thing here. This is really what's going on. Puerto Rican is going to make you feel comfortable. Yeah, I, I just don't want to rush and be in Appreciate that. that. Sorry. Sorry. Always. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I yes. Yeah. But I, I want some well, of those yeah. cookies, though. Nah, so I'm fat out with cookies. Anyway, I'm trying to get you right now. Anyway, A-Tray, back to you because Twist wants some. He he looking a little hungry, but he ain't getting fed. Yes, All right. A train. Yes, yes. Tell us about yourself. I hear that you are a man of different hats. I do a little bit of everything. Okay. We're, we're, we're an entertainment company. Okay. Right. What's the name of your company? It's called A Train Entertainment. Okay. Some people know us as A Train Productions. Some people know us as A Train Music Live, A Train.com, A Train Radio. Okay. Uh, we do stuff with uh, the Queen Bee Search. There's a lot of things that we do. We're affiliated, but we do a lot of stuff outside of New York, too. Okay. But all the artists that are down with A-Train, that have a cause. And that's the most important thing, that you can't get down with us if you don't have a cause. Cause as far as purpose. how, if you well, were An organization, basically, like, there's so much that artists can do right. to help artists. And I think the platform, you want to be a star, you want to rap, you want to sing, you want to have everybody love you, but what about the organizations like Cancer Society? Right. My sister died from cancer, so that's, I'm part about. of that. But yeah. I have my artists who are part of the Cancer Society who do shows for free. Right. Mm. Don't just be a rapper. Right. What you're saying. They do proceeds. They'll yeah. make a CD and they'll give some money and they make a contribution. That's there's diabetes. Called. There's people who have Alzheimer's. Yeah. You know, you want to do things for people, even homelessness. Yeah. I think you, you know? get more recognition like that when you give back to your community. There's a lot of artists that they won't even come back to their hood. Exactly. But you got the same people in their hood continuously supporting them. I, let me tell you, I don't buy albums. I never bought an album a day in my life. Wow. I kid you not. I never bought a fucking album, like, with a with the cover, songs inside, or whatever. They, I never did tell that. Tell us all this why. This is so Because deep. it's, it's so like, situation. if I feel like, like I said, if I feel like you're not giving back, I feel like I you, just, you just want money. You want the that. fame and you want the money. And it's not only about that. If you have a voice and you have a platform, Use that shit to the best of your ability. Use that in so many ways and so many channels because when you do, not only does your respect level go up, your name gets put out there even more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, all right, you're doing something. You're showing your fans, I'm here, I'm back. I'm here to help you. I'm yeah. here to try to make this situation better. You know, even when some of these rappers that do come back to their hood, mm -hmm. You gotta see this, the, the smiles on these kids' faces yeah, because they get so starstruck. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to be able to like go like this and touch you or take a picture of you. You know, mm -hmm. so if you're doing something positive and then you come back on the scene, yo, the love is like endless. You know what? I want to. And that's why I will never yeah. buy an album. You're right. I, I, I'll probably buy a mixtape or a mix CD or whatever or bootleg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and I think too, just to add to what you're saying, you're so right. I think young people, when you have an artist that came from the same hood, yeah, or the same area of the block, whatever it may be, it gives a child hope. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we forget that that the kids are the future. You know, we're doing our thing now, but if we can come back and give a motivation, hope to a child, or even somebody who really gave up in life, some mm -hmm. kids basically give up and they don't care what happened to their lives. Yeah. But if you can go back and show a child. You're something. Yeah, that's why I don't respect you know, the fact respect that they're making that millions and millions of dollars and you want to have like half a million on your neck, half a million in your mouth, <laughs> you want to have 50,000 cars, but you won't invest 500 grand to open up a community center. Yeah. Or you won't invest 500, and 500 grand to them is like a dollar and they can wipe their ass with that shit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, you don't have an, enough in you to say, let me help the youth. Let me help this kid that's buying my CD. Let me help this kid that's constantly buying my music, listening to my music, downloading my music. Mm. They don't think that way. You're preaching some heavy stuff. Open up a fucking a, a, a basketball center. Black kids, I'm not trying to profile, but black kids love basketball. Yeah. Open up a, a, a community center. Open up a, some type of organization where kids can go for free. I you mean, fund that shit. I you. you fund it. What's the what, what money are you gonna be? You just spent like I said a half a million dollars on fucking three chains. That's what I'm saying. What the fuck is that shit doing for you? But no, the well, same that's thing. they're so caught yeah, up in material things. Yeah.
Okay, you're gonna say something really great now, really, on that. Okay. Yeah, most of that the jewelry that he have on is wrenches. It's wrenches, that's right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, but even still, even, even, but you dropping cash to rent that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. You still got money. Your tax bracket is greater than ours. Yeah, you know, really. like I said, you could wipe your ass with a hundred dollars. Me, I'm a fucking, I'm gonna stretch that hundred dollars <laughs> as much as I fucking this can. Is why, this is why I feel the organization with guns down, you know, like fuck, is so important to our own growth as individuals. It's not just the young people; they're really educating us as a whole. Mm -hmm. And if we can all get it, and we are not gonna all get it. That's the sad part. Yep. But if some of us get it with guns down, life, but what they're really trying to do is just give you an alternative. And sometimes the guns got to go down because we know that's the violence. We're killing ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And they want to scream Black up. Lives Matter yeah, yeah, in yeah. the same breath. I yeah. don't get that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that's why I never, I never use the hashtag yeah. Black Lives Matter. I never mm -hmm. use the term Black Lives Matter because it's bullshit to me. Yeah. It's right. bullshit. I'm going to say Black Lives Matter, but you know what? I'm going to grab this phone and I'm going to record this guy getting his ass whooped. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm gonna post it on Facebook because I want to get a million fucking likes and I want my video to go fucking viral. Right, right. It goes yeah. down in the deep. And it's it like, yo, yeah. it just doesn't, the ignorance, it just really bothers me. Well, well stop. But, but what can we do? I mean, you so you hitting some heavy knowledge. I think, oh, they're calling in. This is really, I know you got deep. It was yeah. deep. Let's I'm take sorry, this call. Like, Let's take it. Call you on. Hello. Hi, who's this? Yeah, we're talking about gun violence, and we have our peoples from Guns Down Life Up. It's an organization where they're you know, really enforcing on putting the guns down. They're involved with a lot of hospitals, and you know, it's a, it's a it's a wonderful movement, a wonderful movement. How do you feel about guns nowadays? I feel like you know, it's necessary to have some. Like as a lady, I feel like you know, I need a gun because you never know. I don't need to. I need one for protection. What about me? Like I I personally should have one just in case. But as far as gun violence in the streets, I feel like it's so unnecessary. Like, like it's just unnecessary. Like, yeah. you out here killing folks, carrying on, for what? And it seems yeah. like they're getting younger and younger, right? Yeah. Like, you have 13-year-old... Yeah. My son is 13. I, my son is a wonderful freaking kid, and I'm not saying that because he's my kid. I know it sounds crazy. But he's a great yeah. kid, very well-mannered. I raised him like we in the 80s. I kid you not. I tell people all the time, my son is not a new age kid. He's not a 2016 baby. That's what you gotta you know? do. You gotta he knows, like, to I still make him play Nintendo. Yeah. I <laughs> make him play Nintendo. I'm like, yeah. Look at look at the megabytes that we had on our game. You can't continue. That's right. <laughs> you ain't got no That's damn checkpoint. That's right. Yeah, this is what life was like, okay? Yeah. But it seems like I wouldn't know what the hell to do with myself if my son had a gun at 13 years old. And these kids are walking around with these guns, and these guns are heavy. It's like the guns are almost heavier yeah, than these yeah, kids. Yeah. Well, you know, like, I mean, like, the way... At what point does... We can only do so much, like, as a community. It starts at home. That's yeah, what I absolutely. I totally yeah, agree. It totally starts agree. At home because, you know, me, I was... At home, and that reflects to this day, like, I'm a grown woman. There's certain things I just won't do because it's in my mind, like, yo, that's not cool. Right. So, like, if they're raised up... To know, like, okay, if you got a problem, you can you you talk it out. The that you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but you yeah, like if just you like probably could speak about it. Or if we get too far, like. Get your one on one. There's no reason yeah. to be shooting nobody. Like, but just like um Jay I, said, I was next, scrap. Like that's all. Exactly. But just like Jay said, in this day and age, you got kids having kids. Babies are having babies. Mm -hmm. You got mm -hmm. grandmothers that are thirty years old. <laughs> yeah. I'm like yo. So they don't know any better. If you know everything starts at home with parenting, showing them right from wrong, and uh, enforcing education. Mm -hmm. I think these parents they don't enforce education the way they should. You know, these kids, they come out of school, they don't even have fucking curfews. 
When I was a kid, my ass had to. My, I got out of school at two thirty. My ass <laughs> better have been home by two forty-five. I remember those days. I love that. I remember those days. Get your ass home. Get your ass home. Get in the books. Do your homework. Yeah. Once that street light came on, your ass better be fucking opening that goddamn door. And there's there's like no restrictions now. Like it's a free for all. Kids are disrespecting their parents. They're beating their parents. Yes. So yes. it's like where and most where of na- and then nowadays <laughs> nowadays <laughs> kids don't yeah. parents parents don't even whip their kids' asses. Why? Because it, it it turns out to be child abuse. Right. Back in the day, yeah. shit, I used to get beaten with a belt. My son. We used to get our asses beaten yeah. back in the day. Well, and the cops never came to the door. Exactly. You didn't really think to call 911 to get your ass whooped. <laughs> Listen, I just caught a flashback from a beating that my mother gave me with a three dimensional belt that had stars on it. I saw, I definitely saw the of that shit. You did that now, you be going to jail. I saw a couple of lights. If your mother did that now, she be going to jail. She goes to jail. So jail. But it helped you. And I'm like, you. yeah, but you know what? My, like I said, my son is 13 years old. I have never had to lay a hand on my child because I talked to him. I talked to him. I am so open with him. I give him the real deal. I tell him what society won't. You understand? And it's like these parents, they're just not taking, like I said, they're kids. And they out partying with their fucking kids. When they should be home and saying, yo, read a fucking book for 30 minutes because that's all you got to do is read for 30 minutes. You know, write a paragraph after you read that little book or, or, you know, a couple of paragraphs or whatever the case may be. And, you know, and half of them don't even go to parent-teacher conference. Right. You don't see parents in parent-teacher conference schools, anymore. Right? Gotta be yeah. in your schools. I went to parent-teacher conference two weeks ago. I was the only fucking parent there. I wow. kid you. I kid you not. His That's teacher, not good. his See, teachers, listen, and I'm wow. not even, I'm not even lying and I'm not bullshitting. His wow. teacher broke down in tears. Wow. That's terrible. She's like, I appreciate you being here because you're showing that you're concerned about your son's well-being and his education and you're, you're here because you care. And it helps the teachers too. Of course, they because they need help. They, they, need they don't, care. people don't realize how stressful being a teacher is. When we were little, we was like, always, oh, oh, I hate that bitch. You always had that one teacher that you just didn't like. <laughs> And that's cool, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, it all boils down to parenting. If your parenting yep. skills ain't up to par, yeah, and you know, and, and then not only that, but you have a lot of these kids that don't have fathers. Right. So when they don't have fathers in their lives, they're on some fuck everything type shit. They have no order, they have no guidance, they have no man to tell them, yo, this is something. But, that, but that's why it's a good factor with guns down life up, because sometimes you need a mentor. And sometimes you need a word for a young kid. This is what makes the organization so world known. I respect the organization because I believe in it. Right. It's a way of life. We need to help our young people. Parents need help too. Sometimes yeah. you can't blame the parents if they're not. There's educated. parenting um courses yes. out there. Yes. But yes. again, you know what it is? Yes. Pride yes. The pride won't thing. allow them to right. step into that room because they feel that they know it all. I'm I'm like I said, my son thirteen, I'm still learning right at, of being a parent. Mm-hmm. I'm learning my son because he's a teenager now. His mood has changed. His mindset has changed. He's still a good kid, but his mindset changed a little bit. His thinking changed. The way he responds to things changed. So I have to adapt to him, but then also let him know this is still right and this is still wrong. You know what I'm saying? I agree with you. I mean, I think, like I said, with certain organizations that are trying to at least give a kid a, a chance to really have hope, I think I, I'm gonna say hope. That's what I believe in because sometimes we just give up, and mm-hmm. a lot of the young kids like they don't know what to do, and that's why they turn to the streets. And when they get frustrated with a gun in their hand, with a frustrated kid, you know, it's gonna result in some kind of tragedy. If so, a parent gets up, what what you expect the kid to do? Exactly. Well, that's you you can't expect down, them to go in. That's where guns down life up come in effect. You know, that's why we you know we try to get out here in these streets and give these kids different resources and alternatives opposed to using guns, you know, like I said, we deal with fashion, we deal with showcases. Matter of fact, we actually have a Guns Down Life Up Dr. J's tour taking effect in July. Wow, you know, that's good. We're See also that. working yeah. on the guns. You have down, a date, like a, a set date or not yet? Um, July 20th, actually, we're going to be wow. kicking it off. And, okay. um, yeah. We're also working on the Guns Down Life Up mix CD album, which is going to feature main celebrities, stream celebrities, and we are allowing the up-and-coming artists to participate in this project 
to get on the same platform mm -hmm. as mainstream artists to let them, you know, network with yeah, them yeah. And, and be heard and seen and as well. And help them along and the yes, way. Exactly. It's all about helping you know, them out. You like know? I said, we have Aisha Shea Cool who has Peace Calf up in Harlem. You know, she has a recording studio where she allows kids to come in for oh, free. Wow, and we yeah. teach them how that's to record their own music. They and you know what I mean? We teach them different oh. skills and resources in life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. AJ, I want to thank you for calling in. We appreciate you. you listening and giving us your opinion. And oh, enjoy know. the rest of your evening Stay and your blessed. weekend. Stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know. I, I can't stress enough. It just boils down to parenting. Yeah. You know, and... I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> what the? <laughs> I don't know when it's going to change, but I hope it will someday. It, it will change. We just can't give up. Yeah, because they give up, right. that don't mean we got to give of up. So we got to continue to lead by example. Yeah, definitely. And we got to continue to just engage and get out here in these streets, get in these communities, and get in these schools. We got to get involved. Somebody has to get involved. Somebody has to take lead. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where we come in, Guns Down Life Up. We come in to take lead. We come in to take charge, to let these kids know that they can do better. They can change. I mean, I look at myself. I came from the streets. I mean, I was out there, you know, between being locked up, selling drugs, shooting Me guns. Too. You know, I was, I, was, yeah, I was a real I was a real bad scene, but I thank God for allowing me this opportunity to be in a situation to where now you I learned your lesson. Back. Yes. A yes. lot of these kids, they don't learn exactly. their lesson. They just keep repeating the same shit, repeating the same shit. And it's like, it, some of them like to go to jail because they get in food board. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's that's true. True. But you know, you know after a while, that plays out. Of as you course, get older, but, they, but they like that. They're used to that. Because they, they think that's trendy. They think yeah, that's going to make them that's, and that's they are. Right. 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 As long as they can say free such and such, that's it. Exactly. Yeah, but it's so much more to life than that. You know what I mean? We also having a dance competition. I mean, like I said, we do Yeah, let us know everything that you have going on, please. We're having a dance competition, twin in the club, 50-50. Can I join? Yes, you can. I don't know how to turn. No, 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 we ain't twerking. I, I finally, I finally learned how to dab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But my son said my dab is weak. No, oh, whatever we oh, have oh, to do, oh, say something to the attention of the dab. Our future, we're going to make it happen. Make them happen, spot it, give them hope. Yes, that's what's up. That's definitely what's up. I want to thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having us. You know, it's been great. Very, yes. very informative. Very I appreciate you guys. Your doing um, so good. Go to GunsDownLifeUp.org. Yes, check that out. You know what I mean? Check, check that out. out. GunsDownLifeUp.org. <laughs> It'll give you all the resources. This is not just for the kids. This is for the parents, Everybody. too. Everybody. For the parents that's affected, you know, or family members that's affected by gun violence, we can help y'all, too. Yes. So please take heed to what I'm saying. Put the guns down. And not only that, but if your family has been affected yes. by gun violence, that should make you... Being 